Okay, I'm going to do one more. Um, another one, sorry, that's not the application I want. Another one in this drum series I've been working on. Let's open up a brand new file in Logic. And this time I am going to show the battery for uh, drums that I like to use sometimes, that it's more involved. So first of all, we make a software instrument. So we do that. That's empty channel. Don't worry about that. Ignore. Um, so we go to, sorry here, native instruments. Uh, sorry, AU instruments, native instruments. Yeah, so it's AU instruments, native instruments, battery four. Definitely want stereo again. And it takes a bit of time to load. It's pretty CPU intensive, so. <clears throat> You should uh, not open a lot of these up, basically. Just have one. Uh, so basically, OK. I've already got DMX in there. But here are the two kits I like to use these days for my Synthwave music. So basically, you can pick kits and samples. So I usually do kits. So for example, let's do the DMX kit. You have to type in here, DMX. And we got the DMX kit. And we've got two layers, each with different sounds. So you can hear them playing there. There we go. Let's see if we can get it louder. And I'll turn it up here. Here's the kick. So da 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 da. All the typical stuff. And another layer starting down here. And yeah, these are fully customizable. We've got all these extra rows if you want to throw in extra stuff. Um, yeah, so basically I do it the same way. You can play around with compression like this. And that affects each one individually. This compression on the kick. And there's That's a tambourine. Compression on this, etc., etc. Uh, let's see here. You can also play with a pan, so you might want to do that with the toms. Where are the toms? The toms are kind of apart from each other. Oops, let's go down here. So I want to pan one tom. Yeah, and that's it. This is very useful too a high cut, a low cut. If you want to get rid of this, some of the bottom end or some of the top end. Uh, okay, so all these functions here control each one individually. But then there's a master one too that you can play around with. And the master, you control the delay and reverb if you need it. So it took me a while to figure out that those are actually independent and they're on the master that affect all the drums. So if you want to bring up, say, you have to go back here if you want the snare to have some uh reverb on it you have to go here and add it that way and see the other ones are not affected just this one but the global area to change the reverb is here so just keep that in mind okay so that's the dmx kit if you have any questions just let me know um here's the other kit i like to use l-i-n-n -N. it's a lin drum kit and yeah, it's got a bit more features. So it's got four rows. And you just do it the same way I said before. And if you want to, you can always, I learned this recently, you can make more rows by clicking here, add a row, which is pretty useful. Another guy was talking about in a video. You can add as many rows as you like, I guess. Add row, blah, blah, blah. They just get smaller and smaller. And then you can go in, say, if there's a certain tom or you like from another kit or whatever you can just drag it in here and there you go and then if you have it all customized you can just save it the way you like it and that's it in a nutshell um, there's a lot of stuff to go through here to get this uh, the drum sound you want um, I think other videos were talking about it for example I like to use the effects layer quite a bit like um, transient uh, master is very useful for affecting the attack of the drum 
the sustain and you can play around with those and again those only change the individual drums so there's attack yeah that's attack you get the idea so that's transient master another compressor I guess there's a more in-depth compressor and you can play around with that low pass frequency uh, filter EQ pretty self-explanatory you can play around with different settings lo-fi to get uh, a more of a lo-fi sound play around with that saturation you can change uh, tape saturation so it, it's really in-depth and that about covers that area modulation I haven't really gotten into yet um, set up. Oh, this is useful. When you have a drum groove or whatever, uh, using Human Eyes can actually make all your hits a little bit, a little bit more random, and you can change the degree of that so you get more of a human feel. Hence, Human Eyes. So I use that from time to time. Um, MIDI Echo. Oh, yeah. To turn off and on, you just hit this. Obviously, these little power button icons up here. And that's pretty self-explanatory. MIDI echo, I, don't, I haven't used yet. Articulation, I haven't used yet. Uh, editor, again, this is pretty in-depth. You can actually change. Let's see what how that affects us. It just makes it super short, so you lose the tail on it. You get the idea. Um, Oh, and you can also layer sounds here, I, I learned recently, through this editor. So there's your, and this is the, the velocity curve. So you can actually change that. See, I'm hitting, it's not going at all because I'm hitting too softly. Or I'm hitting too hard, sorry, the other way around. Or you can just move it up like this. It only responds when you hit it hard. And then when you, you know, you just move it around, that's basically the velocity curve, how hard or how soft you hit it. And then, so that's over the whole range, you can bring in other sounds, so it's totally cool. Now oh, let's do this. You can layer a sound like this, side by side. So it's actually triggering both. Or you can lower one, so it only registers when you hit very softly. So your imagination is the limit with this, basically layering how many can you layer? Looks like a heck of a lot. It just goes on and on and on, so it gets pretty intense. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. That's how I use battery these days. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.